What's going on friends? Hey, it's Shauna Blanca Real Estate. We're with eXp Realty and today I want to give you guys a little bit of a slap in your face, wake you up market update because I think I have to do that because the world is saying, oh, the moratorium and the market's going to crash and the world's coming to an end. So I want to counter, I want to be a counterweight to what you hear in the media. Um, and if you're hearing a lot of you know, fear mongering, put it in the comments, let me know. But I seem to see that on my feed. I don't know about you, but let's jump into this. And what we're going to cover today is just four points. And number one, we're going to be talking about that federal rent moratorium ending very soon right now. Will it cause a market crash? Okay. Number two, has the market slowed down? Number three, what's going on with people's money and just all the spending and, and what's going on there? And number four, you know, what should you do about it? Like what's some advice? And um, because I don't know if you know this, but Blanca and I got into real estate in 2006. So we had to, we never really saw a good market for like a decade, okay? We went through the trenches of the foreclosure and short sale market. So I think we kind of seen a lot, okay, over the last 15 years. And so let's get into this, the, the federal rent moratorium, right? Of, of course, there's kind of two sides to this, right? There is like, if you're a renter, right? All right, so then you have your landlord, you don't own the property, then you're an investor who's dealing with the renters. Um, then also we have, you know, just people who are homeowners that have to deal with their lender. Okay. So there's kind of a lot going on, but I want to just make it really clear for everyone. The difference between right now in 2021 versus 08, 07 is that in 2007 and 2008, people didn't have any equity. They didn't have a cushion in their mortgage. They bought a house for 250 and they owed like two. 49.9. Okay. That was the problem with 2008. And so the whole thing crashed. Um, believe me, we went on appointments for like a whole decade and we always had to ask the question and okay, like, here's what your house is worth. Let's just say let's like 300,000. Your house would sell for 300. You know, how much do you own the property? It was kind of like, hold your breath. Like, Oh my God, we, Oh, we still owe like, you know, 298. <laughs> and so that was the story of our lives for many years. Okay. And now I can tell you, because we run numbers every day of the week for multiple properties, and we talk to a lot of sellers and investors, they don't own, they don't owe that much in their houses. They paid it off. Uh, most of them haven't refinanced and, and pulled out all their equity. So the, the number one reason why I do not believe that there's going to be a crash is because people have equity and people have savings. They've saved their cash. A lot of the smart investors and just smart homeowners have paid down their credit cards. Um, yeah, I think spending, spending has spiked lately because of people are itching to spend that, those, those dollars. But, um, that's the number one reason I want to get through you guys is that even though people are going to have to pay rent again, okay, hopefully they've been saving and they haven't blown all their money on boats and cars and all this stuff. Uh, and they've maybe started a business during the, the time where they didn't have to pay the, the mortgage or maybe worked some extra hours and hopefully they were smart with their money. But, um, Again, uh, most of the time, if you're a homeowner, they're going to add that uh, balance to the end of your loan. So really, you're not even going to have to deal with it until you sell. And it's just going to be a little bump in the road. Um, plus, couldn't you start paying off a little bit more during every month? Just pay a little bit more. Uh, so I don't see any reason why that's going to crash the economy or, or damage the real estate market. Okay, so I hope that makes a lot of sense to you guys. Um, number two, has the market slowed down? Okay, so... Thank God, yes, it, it has slowed down a little bit because it wasn't even sustainable. Earlier this spring, you know, a lot of the agents I know are almost like burnt out because they ran so hard, they made so many offers, there were so few listings on the market um, and people were offering so aggressively. So it has backed off a bit, but again, that's no reason to panic. That's called a normal just market fluctuation, right? So we don't want it to be that crazy all year round because it can't continue to do that. Uh, that would be unhealthy, right? So it is slowing down a little bit. Uh, but I don't feel like there's a crash in any way, okay? Um, I hope that answers that question. Let me know if you have more comments on that or if you've seen differently. It's it's fine if you want to um, argue a little bit with me. Uh, and then my question about money these days is that, like, honestly, guys, I, I meet a lot of young people that, yeah, they're excited, they're starting life and stuff, but they're just not making that much money, yet they go out and buy that BMW, they're taking all these vacations, and I'm just wondering, like, are they just not valuing money or something? You know, because you just can't spend that kind of money until you're established, until you, you know, have some bank in the bank and, and then you have a business that can like maybe sustain because jobs could be, you know, in the future, you, you could lose your job. I just, I see that people are a little bit 
not valuing a dollar. And so again, um, if, if you want to get ahead in life, think about starting a business, think about doing something outside the box that can generate some more income because living off of these, you know, paychecks in this today's economy, guys, I just don't know if that's going to be the right answer. Um, or, you know, get a, if you're a young person, get a trade where you can fall back if you need to make, you know, 80,000 a year, 90,000 a year doing a trade, something that's in high, high demand right now. So just kind of a piece of advice, okay? Value the dollar, stop going out to eat every single day and blowing all your money on, on food and cars and alcohol and stuff like that, okay? So with this real estate market, with all this kind of uncertainty, like what should you be doing about it, okay? So we have kind of a philosophy which we, talk to our clients about, and that is a home should be a lifestyle cost, a lifestyle decision for you. Now that doesn't mean you should buy the absolute most expensive home that's out of your budget. No, but that means, you know, if you really, for example, have a home-based business or you work at home and you need to have that four bedroom house plus an office, um, and maybe you have an elderly parent coming, uh, they want to live on the main level or something like what well, we had a situation like that. So we purchased a little bit above where we wanted to, but it really made a difference on our lifestyle because Blanca's parents could come and stay with us for um, sometimes a few months out of the year. So uh, it was a little bit, Blanca was a little bit stressed out on that one in the beginning, but now she's super happy that, um, you know, we put down a good down payment. Uh, we had a lot of our, we just had all of our bills paid off, credit cards paid off. So we came into this property feeling really good and it served our life well, okay? So it's like end of the cul-de-sac. We got a really nice view. It's in a good neighborhood where we want it to be. Um, and so that is what you need to think about when you buy is how is it going to serve your lifestyle, you know, without putting you over budget. Okay. On top of that, if you're worried about the economy going south, because you know, there are talks about COVID again and all this stuff, you might not want to buy a house. If you're selling in the next year, if you need to sell within the next year or two, you might not want to jump into a property unless it's like a sweet deal and you can renovate it and get it up to, to, to par. But if you're, if you're going to be purchasing for the five to 10 year plan, and you know it's a good house and you can maintain it and keep it nice and, and make some improvements, you're gonna be just fine. The market will take some adjustments over those 10 years, I can guarantee it. But that's what you have to think about with real estate. It's not some uh, get rich quick thing, right? Unless you're flipping. So that's another business model, but you gotta be careful right now with that. There's not a lot of good deals out there for flipping. You have to, you have to, be, a very, um, you have to be a very efficient machine to make money flipping homes right now. So um, anyway, guys, I hope that puts things into perspective. We've seen it all, you know, through the 15 years. And uh, if you ever wanted to talk more about real estate specifically, always reach out um, to us. Check out shotofblanca.com. Comment down below. And hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Talk to you.